Hello, welcome to The Outspoken Artist here at Imaging USA 2024. With me, I have Kiati. How are you, Kiati? Hello. I'm good. How are you? Doing great. You landed, like, what, two hours ago? Yeah. Yeah. Landed, <laughs> went right to the hotel, checked in, and booked it over here and saw you. Actually, you're the first Lit- person. <laughs> Literally, yeah. It saw you coming in. Yeah. Um, great, great for coming. Thank you for coming, by the oh, way. No um, what brings you to Imaging? Um... So I tour the conference circuit quite a bit between imaging, WPPI, ClickOn, um, you know, people here. And a lot of it is a good way to catch, catch up with friends, catch up with colleagues. Um, you know, my sponsors are here, so I'm here to represent them as well. And, and really, it's, you know, when you're a photographer, you're kind of lonely in your room of one, right? And these conferences are a great way to find like-minded people find people that, you know, are creatives as well, and, you know, it's a good opportunity to learn from each other, you know, it's it's the only way you can have your water cooler talk face-to-face. Very true. You know, like, we do, um, with with another organization I'm part of, the Peculiar Collective, um, we do nightly Zooms, you know, so, you know, it's a lot of co-working, and, you know, we're, we're on and we're doing Zooms and, you know, we get to see each other's faces sometimes if we turn on the cameras, sometimes we don't. And then, but it's a good way to just kind of talk and, and bounce ideas off each other. But, you know, these conferences are a great way to see people physically in person, you know, and especially after COVID. And, you know, I can't believe it's so many years ago, but like, you know, having that physical touch, being able like, you know, while I was, you know, roaming the, the expo floor, I, you know, I ran into so many people and like, you know, giving so many big hugs and just like you know it's family right, right. so you know, that's especially after bunkering down people just kind of stayed to themselves meeting people in person and stuff it's very nice yeah definitely and tell me a little bit you mentioned peculiar what is that one about so that's that's a smaller organization um, based out of Maryland we have about a thousand folks within the organization and um, you know it's a Facebook community you know and um, RJ Paul created it several years ago and it just slowly kind of grew, you know. He's a photographer based out in Salisbury, um, you know, and it was just a community just kind of slowly growing. And, you know, last year we had our second conference. So um, I was on the board to help organize it. And it, it's amazing to kind of go to these conferences and, you know, be a speaker and, you know, work the exhibits and things of that sort. But then it's a totally different channel to be on the other side and plan a conference, right? Everything from figuring out logistics for, you know, um, you know, the venue to food to parking to, you know, keynote speakers and things of that sort. Um, it's it, it was an amazing experience to kind of go through, and it you know definitely puts a whole lot of um, you know appreciation for the people that put on these conferences for us. Can you tell me of a time in one of your expos or conferences? that sticks out for you as one of the most memorable ones? That's tough. Um, because a lot of times I come to these things and it's a blur, right? Um, you know, for me, like, coming to these conferences is definitely work, right? And even WPPI. So, you know, before before going to WPPI, which is in Vegas, um, before going to that quite a bit, you know, the max I could stay in Vegas is three days, right? And then... Um, but, you know, WPPI is typically a five- to six-day venture, right? So you're coming in, you're coming in before the conference starts, you set up a workshop, and then between, you know, the vendor meetings and the workshops and just connecting with people, you know, the next thing you know, you blink and your schedule is packed, right? So, you know, I, I was there. It's probably been, I want to say the first WPPI I went to, um, I was able to attend classes. And then since then, I've only been able to drop in on a couple classes here and there. Outside of that, it's really working the expo floor and doing the workshops and doing photo walks and just really just spending time connecting with people. Yeah. The photo walks, I've seen them. For someone who may not be familiar with it, what are the photo walks? So the photo walks are just really, you know, just that, a photo walk, right? It's, um, a, you know, people will go to a booth and... You know, there'll be a feature photographer there, and they'll take photographers around and kind of teach them about lighting, teaching about, you know, posing, styling, things of that sort. And, um, you know, we'll just kind of take a group of, like, you know, 20 or 30 people around. And it's, you know, depending on how it's set up, 
you know, you're walking around the convention floor, so you're not really getting a lot of um, really artist, artistic, um, you know, venues and things of that sort. Like, we're probably gonna, I'm, I'm probably gonna spend the rest of my day here just kind of figuring out what I'm gonna do for my photo walk tomorrow, just trying to find, you know, something that's interesting to kind of shoot, you know, and, you know, and in most cases, you can really kind of narrow down and, like, find a little spot in the corner and make it interesting, but sometimes, you know, with, like a venue like this where there's a large amount of light, you know, it's, you know, there's, there's different things that you can do with it, but there's also limitations that you have, especially with random people walking around as well. That too, and reflections and whatnot. Yep. So what, tell us a little bit about your genre of photography, because you're not just focused into one particular lane. Mm -hmm. What is it that you specialize in, Chiari? So the two main uh, genres I focus in is boudoir and dance. So I do a lot of, um, you know, my daughter's danced. And I started um, by just kind of taking photos of their recitals. And then I, then the studio asked me to do um, portraits for them. And then that's really where I kind of fell in love with, you know, doing portraits and, and really fine art uh, dance portraits. And then that's kind of segued into um, sports photography a little bit. And then, um, and then doing really like artistic fine art portraits. And then on the flip side, um, there's, you know, the boudoir. It's like, and at the end of the day, it's, it's kind of really, to its core, kind of very similar in the fact where we're creating images to, to really shine the beauty of them, right? And I think that's what we do with photography. We, we try to do with photography anyway, right? It's, it's capturing the beauty of them that they might not always see, right? And I think with boudoir, it's a little bit more special than that because, you know, I, the best compliment you can get is, you know, when you show them the back of the camera, it's like, I can't believe that's me, right? And you can generally say, that is 100% you. It's back of the camera, you know, we haven't put it into Lightroom or Photoshop or done editing, editing to it. You know, that is 100% you. And to get that reaction from them and, and seeing them light up and seeing the confidence build, and, you know, that's really why I kind of moved into boudoir is just that, you know, that instant, you know, feeling of, oh, my God, this is, this is incredible. I can't believe that's me. And then having that instant impact. And then segueing that into seeing those same reactions to the dancers and then, you know, the seniors. And, you know, I, I run a 40 over 40 campaign and even just, you know, women who, you know, don't have to be, you know, in lingerie and just kind of in whatever makes them feel comfortable and being able to capture them in, in those ways and then kind of moving that into beyond women but also men as well and being able just to capture people, right? At the end of the day, I love being able to capture people. Um, I love, you know, just kind of freezing that, you know, moment in time. You know, I always kind of tease saying, you know, that's our superpower, we freeze time, you know, and being able to kind of, you know, Kind of create those memories and and you know immortalize them into an image that people can always look back to. When you when you photograph these these folks, men or women, let's say men, mm -hmm. and do you do men boudoir? Mm -hmm. I do. How how does it make you feel? Because normally boudoir is normally associated with women, mm -hmm. but for a man to see himself in that way, in the way you photograph them, how does it make you feel as a photographer when? you immediately see their reaction be this positive. Because we don't get a lot of positive affirmation as men. Right. And when they see your work, how, how does that make you feel? Uh, it, it makes me feel amazing. It's like, you know, and whether it's men in boudoir or even seniors, boys, right? Like even kind of taking it on the other end of the spectrum where, you know, I get a lot of seniors that are, that are female, right? You know, girls love to take their pictures taken. Boys hate getting their pictures taken, right? And usually it's the, the mom saying, hey, you know, you're a senior, let's get your photos done, I'd love for you to do it, do it for mom. And then usually the boys are kind of like, begrudgingly kind of doing it, it's like, okay, right? But then you kind of get them to, I, the, I think the biggest worry is, am I gonna look stupid or, you know, am I gonna look like a nerd or this and that, or is, or is it? You know, it's just weird, right? It's like we don't do that, right? And then you show them the photo, and they're like, "Oh, crap! This is kind of cool, right?" <laughs> and then that 
boost their confidence, right? right? And, you know, so, like, that underlying nature of being able to capture them as they are and then having them see themselves the way that you see them and others see them that they may not necessarily, you know, register, I think that's really where, um, regardless of whether you're male or female, whether you're an adult or, you know, you know, a, a young teen, you know, that, that confidence build is, is amazing, you know, and, you know, that's that, that impact, right? So we always, you know, hopefully try to do things that impact the world or impact people, right? You know, my background is electrical engineering. I did consulting for 20 years, right? I spent the majority of my corporate career helping large companies make more money, right? You see the impact, but does it cause an impact, right? Whereas now that I do this, I see the impact and it causes an impact, right? So, you know, whether whether I make the same or, if, you know, if I make more there or if I make more here, like, that is negligible because the impact that I'm creating or the impact that I'm providing for my subjects, like, beats a tenfold. Unfold. Absolutely, absolutely. It's just much different impact for right. the person. You mentioned electrical engineering. What led, what started your photography journey? I uh, started taking pictures of my kids. Okay. So um, I have two, two girls. Um, got a camera. You know, it was Black Friday. I was like, you know, I had the whole point and shoot, right? So you push the button, three seconds later, it clicks, right? And the whole digital point and shoots. And, um, you know, when you had young kids, they're running around everywhere. Right, so it's always a blurry picture or whatever moment that you wanted to capture, you know, it's gone. So it's like, oh, how do I kind of fix this? So um, I had some friends, you know, had a DSLR. I said, oh, you have to, you know, get one of these types of cameras and kind of look into it. And back then I had no understanding of that, right? You know, my one friend was telling me how she got her bag stolen and it had like, you know, five thousand dollars worth of gear. I was like, oh my god, I can't believe that you would carry that. <laughs> and now I'm like, yeah, that's a Tuesday, <laughs> you know? And, you know, so, so I, got, I got one on Black Friday, and it, my first camera was a Nikon uh, D60. And, um, you know, I just started taking pictures of the kids. And then one year we had 10 weddings to go to. And, you know, I would take my camera along and just kind of, you know, snap it for fun just to kind of, you know, not be bored, really, you know? After, after the fourth wedding of a 10 wedding, you know, track, you're like, okay, it's going to be just the same thing over and over again, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, and then I would just give the, give the images to, to my friends in addition to the, the wedding present. They're like, oh, wow, we should have had you take our wedding photos, you know? And then I started hearing that more and more. And then, um, you know, it just slowly kept evolving. And it was like, oh, well... You know, and like for me, it was like everything's either technical or business, right? So I was like, well, I kind of want to keep doing this. It's a really expensive hobby. How do I monetize it? And then um, I was interviewing a photographer uh, for my sister's wedding. You know, we kind of all sat there, and um, the photographer and I became really good friends. She invited me into this uh, group in D.C. of wedding photographers, and um, I just started becoming part of the community and just learning and. Um, so then I, you know, when I actually started actually, you know, accepting jobs, I was doing weddings and families and I peeked into newborns a little bit. And then one of the wedding photographers that I shot with, you know, she was like, oh, I want to do this boudoir workshop. It's up in Pennsylvania. I don't really want to drive by myself. Would you come with me? And I was like, sure, I'll be a ride or die. You know, so we went and fell in love with the genre. Like, the people were amazing. The artistry was amazing. And then I started looking into it more, and then the business side of it just made more sense for me, right? So with a wedding, you're, you know, back then, you know, what you were pricing weddings at, and then, um, you know, you're working about 32 hours when you factor in, like, an eight-hour wedding, the amount of consultation beforehand, the amount of editing you're doing back on the back end, designing the albums, things of that sort, you know, for boudoir, I'm shooting two and a half hours. It's less predict. It's it's more predictable yeah. than a wedding. Yeah, and if like you miss the kiss, it's okay, right? Like you just reshoot it, right? So the stress level is much less. 
the um, you know you control the timetable. You know you're shooting less, making the same amount if not more, and you're providing such a deeper impact. You know, and you and because boudoir is very much a luxury you know offering, right? You have less photographers that that you have to compete with as far as pricing. Right. So and, and the Boudoir community is fantastic. And the fact that we share our pricing, we share our methodology, we are very open to it, right? But when I got into weddings, you know, it, everyone held their pricing and all that stuff close to the vest, right? And they're afraid, right? So that's why you have people that come in fresh and are offering weddings for twelve hundred dollars or less. Right. Right? And then and then you have the wedding photographers that are pros that are like, you know, minimum starting at like four or five thousand, they're like this is what I'm competing with, right? And, you know, not everybody's looking at the work. Not everybody's appreciating the work. They're just looking at, I need someone to shoot this wedding, and what, how much is it going to be, right? Whereas with boudoir photography, you know, it's very much a, I'm doing this for myself, you know? And I've had clients come in and say, you know, it's, it's our anniversary, or it's my husband's birthday, or, you know, I'd like to do this for him, you know, as a gift. I was like, sure. But that day you come into the studio, that is your day. And you may not understand what that means now, but you will understand what that means. It's like, it's a day focused on you. It's a day that we're going to pamper you. You're going to have an amazing time. Your confidence is going to go through the roof because that is a day focused on you. And, you know, you kind of think about, like, my average demographic, right? You know, like, you know, as parents, we focus on our kids, Right, we spent all the money in the world on our kids, and we wouldn't hesitate. Right, growing up, like you know, I thought like you know, Nintendo was expensive, and back then it was like 150. You know, parents are spending like six to eight hundred dollars on a PS5. Right, right. So you know, iPhones are a thousand dollars. Right, um, advertised over several months, but it's still like you're dropping a thousand dollars, and everyone's got one in their hand all through high school. So like. You know, but if I were to go to you and say, "All right, you know, your session's six fifty, and our average um, client spends about five thousand for for their album," you know, most people are like what? Right? Unless they really know about that experience, unless they really understand what that experience is doing for them, you know, people will pay for what they value. Very true. Experiences are completely different because yep. tangible items doesn't matter what it is. Right. They go away, but it's those memories mm-hmm. that really stay with you. Do you. Can you tell me of a time of a memory or a particular session that just, I'm sure you have plenty of them, but yeah. that sticks out specifically for you for one reason or another? Um, I had a client who, like I, I get some clients that are just doing this as a divorce celebration. Right, so you know they get the divorce and they're celebrating for that. This one client just was going through um, a really bad one, and she comes in and she's like, "Sorry, I'm late. Uh, you know, right now my husband's supposed to be out of the house, but you know, we're still kind of going through that, so he's still there. So I just have to kind of figure out how to get out and this and that, you know." And you know, she sat in the she sat in the makeup chair. And I was like. Do me a favor, just sit in the massage chair for a couple minutes, just relax. You know, we're on your time today. And, you know, when she kind of got in the makeup chair, and once she, like, let everything escape, and, um, you know, that that's when she started to be like, okay, this is really about me. And, you know, she was profusely, profoundly, like, you know, appreciative of it. Like that that's that's one that kinda sticks out. Another one is had a woman come to me that um, you know, at the time she was a second year survivor of breast cancer. And um, you know, her husband loves her immensely, you know, unconditionally. And um, you know, in our console she was like, I know he loves me, I know he thinks I'm beautiful, but I'm not seeing what I know I look like before. You know, and, um, you know, so I need to do this for me. And to this day, this was several years ago, to this day, she is one of my biggest advocates. You know, um, you know, and 
it wasn't anything crazy that we did. It was just her being able to see herself the way she remembered herself to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was, that, that's probably one of my favorites. That's beautiful, man. Yeah. That's beautiful. Um, yeah, people, we, we don't see ourselves. We don't give ourselves enough credit for how we look or how we are. Yeah. We have these filters of criticism. Yep. And this is where you take it, and you're like, let me show you. First of all, pampering. Yeah. I, when you mentioned that some of these clients do things for their husbands or et cetera, I never looked at it from the dimension of like, okay, yeah, you're doing it for that, but the session's for you. Yeah. Because I don't do boudoir, but just mm-hmm. hearing that, just, I get it now. I get why some of these photographers that do boudoir get these emotions from, the, from their clients. I can see it in your work. Yeah. Because you're making it about them mm-hmm. and eliminating that outcome. Like, you're doing it for you and you're getting this for them. Right. So that, that's, really, that's really great. That's really great. Um, you educate photographers and you teach them. I know you have some workshops coming up that I'd like to know about, but what kind of education do you provide photographers? So, you know, between workshops and mentoring, I kind of run the gamut, right? So... Um, just from just my past experience, my past life, you know, I, you know, I got my MBA. Um, I start up my wife's optometry practice. We do consulting. You know, majority of my career has been in consulting. So, you know, it's like, how do we look at the business aspect of it, right? Even just kind of, you know, take optometry. My wife's an optometrist, right? We have there's a, you know, so many practices out there. There's there's great doctors, but those doctors aren't always great business people. Hold that thought. Yep. Kiari, you teach photographers, um, and you also mentor them. Can you tell me a little bit about what that looks like? Sure. Um, so I, I have a mentoring program, and I take photographers in, and I teach them everything from the business behind photography as well as the technical aspects of shooting and lighting and posing and things of that sort. So, you know, I kind of run the gamut. Um, it's, I kind of lean back into my background. You know, I did consulting for 20-plus years, um, you know, my wife has an optometry business. We start her practice up. We consult on that. So, you know, in the same fashion where you have a lot of good doctors, but horrible business people, you know, they love to be doctors, but they hate the business side of it. Right. Photographers are the same way. You know, you have artists, you know, creators, and they are fantastic at doing that, but sometimes they're not the best at business doing business where they they hate the business side aspect of it right or you know having to you know set up your chart of accounts set having to you know do the marketing having to do all those things you know having to put yourself out there um so you know depending on what people are looking for you know i kind of run that gamut you know and in a lot of you know situations like um imaging and wpbi you know i'll go out and i'll do a workshop and we'll mainly focus on lighting or posing or kind of creating images, right? In most cases, you know, photographers just kind of really want um, an opportunity to kind of create and be creative and learn how to, um, you know, create in a certain style, right? right? So, you know, that's that's one aspect of it. Then there's other aspects of, like, you know, how do I, how do, I do this, this, and this, you know? And it's... And you kind of look at it, and it's like all business related. So then we kind of sit down and kind of go through that. Um, you know, everything from like, you know, if you wanted to actually have a studio, how do you do lease negotiations for a studio? And so uh, done quite a bit of lease negotiations and just kind of understanding the, the pitfalls of that, you know. So there's there's definitely a lot of different aspects of it. Um, but what most people come to me for is lighting and posing. Nice. Do you have any workshops coming up? I do. I have, um, I did, I'm doing a pop-up one tomorrow, tomorrow night. And then I have one in Las Vegas uh, right before WPPI, so March 3rd. Um, we're going out into the sand dunes, and I have uh, four models. We are, two of the models are going to be um, designed in kind of a Mad, Mad, Mad Max meets uh, Stargate kind of theme in like the desert. Um, and then uh, we have two of the models that are going to be doing fashion and boudoir as well. So um, real big flowy dresses. Um, that's the other thing I'm kind of known for. I was about to ask you the flowy dresses. Yeah. Do you have Do you have a name for that style? It, it's we kind of call it flying dress. You know, um, you know, one of my sponsors, uh, so Trendy 
accessories, they uh, they supply all of my gowns, um, and I you know if I help them kind of figure out, okay, I have a conference coming up, I have dancers, so um, last summer. Valerie designed the Mariposa, which is probably hands down one of my favorite gowns. Um, it's great for dancers, it's great for everybody else. Um, it's easy to pack, it's made with a chiffon material, so there's really hardly any wrinkles. Um, you know, it's it's lovely, it's it's fantastic, and I think I have it in three different colors. Um, but it works really well. So, and you know, those really, I think, for the general public, that's those are the types of images um, on my feet that makes the most impact, right? So with boudoir, I don't because you know Facebook is is you know as, even though there's a lot of personal um, friends on my Facebook account and my my kids' parents are on their account, you know I don't push my boudoir on there as much as I do my Instagram. Like I, I push it enough that people know that I do it, so I don't try to hide from it. It's, right. it's something I'm proud of. It's something you know, as, as having two daughters, I'm very proud of, and, and having them understand that, you know, everybody's a boudoir body, and you, you know, I want them to love the skin that they're in, you know, and being able to be comfortable with that, and being able to be comfortable with, with themselves is important for me, and that's kind of how I wanted to raise them. So like, you know, it's there, but it's also I don't try to put it in everybody's face. Right, um, but the flying dress, you know, like we had a snow um, a couple of weeks ago, so, and um, it's fun because like I always I always will post into the and and saying hey whoever's around, and luckily I have a lot of dancers in my neighborhood, right, and the moms are always on my feed, so they're like hey, so and so's here, you know, and school's out, so you know it's easy for them. And um, like, hey, we could be up in your studio in like five minutes and we can just walk up, you know? And I was like, okay, done. Because my studio is like literally like three houses down from where I'm at, right? Luckily, I live like really close to our retail center in our neighborhood and um, I can walk up if I need to. And um, met them at the studio and we're like, all right, let's have some fun today, you know? Um, I love to shoot. I love to be creative. So um, I have some friends that are very much in the mindset of, I'm only going to click the button if I get paid, right? For me, yes, that's great. And I would say that's probably 80%. But, like, that 20%, that creativity, that's that's what keeps me from being burnt out. Right. You know? So it's it's being able to do that. And, you know, and that's what I also teach my students as well. Like, you have to love what you do. We are in a very fortunate um, industry where... We, we chose this, right? It's like, how many accountants do you know that love being an accountant, right? You know, photographers love to create, love to do what they do, you know? And it's, you know, it's very rare that you're going to find a photographer that hates being a photographer, you know? You know, they'll, they'll do it. And it's, you know, it's not a job that you typically fall into. Let's put it that way, right? Unless you're your father was a photographer and their father was a photographer right. and you know it's that pressure to do that or you kind of inherit the family business but then you know but you always find ways to kind of shoot the things that you love right and and sometimes you know we in in doing the hustle we will find genres that we shoot to put the food on the table but then also take that time for yourself to kind of do the things that you love so that way you still love clicking that button you gotta, you gotta love clicking that button. Otherwise, yeah. you'll burn out quickly. Yeah, you'll burn out quickly. Since we're in imaging, do you have any funny stories of imaging, whether last year, a couple of years? Um, so I'll say, to be honest, this is my third imaging. So I, I've been part of PPA for quite some time, but like, you know, when I was juggling the the corporate job and, and photography, just you know, out of all the conferences, you know, the timing and things of that sort, um, it didn't really make sense right and then finally when I kind of went out on my own and just did it full time you know I started like emerging and said okay let me let me check this out and then imaging a couple years ago was in DC so it's like oh it's in my back door why wouldn't I go right and then um, and then I went last year um, so I was doing a style shootout with a friend and we were going around the, the Gaylord and we're pretty much on our last set. 
and the Gaylord has these beautiful, like the Gaylord in uh, Nashville, has these beautiful cascading stairwells. And we had the big, huge, flowy gowns, and we put two models up there, and we we're kind of setting everything up. Security comes by, and they're like, you guys can't be here. Mind you, Imaging rented out the whole Gaylord for a photography conference. <laughs> so we're like, um, badged, you know, instructor, this is why we're here, you know. Um, but they wouldn't budge. And we got a couple shots in, and then we kind of moved on to another part of the hotel. But I guess it was that one area where, because I think that was also near some of the other side of the hotel where they checked in. Mm. But it still wasn't, like, anywhere near registration or anything like that stuff. It was just more so, like, when you walk in, you saw this cascading. And then there was, like, I think the fact that they saw, you know, I think we had eight people with us, plus the five models. And then um, and then the two other instructors and stuff like that. So it's, like, it was a large entourage. And they, I think they were just, like, oh, you're just making a ruckus. So. Wow. That's where I met you. Yeah. I met you at Imaging last year in Nashville. Yep. and. Funny story, it only happened because I chose not to go to bed. Rick, Rick Lewis said, yeah, I'm helping uh, Kiati. I had no idea who you were. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm going to help him out. He's, he's, doing, he's, doing, he's doing a photo shoot, and I'm just probably going to hold a light stand and whatnot, which he was. He was a human light stand. Yep. And so you, you come out, you know? And I'm like, okay, you know, I'll yeah. think about it. Then I said, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to get out of my comfort zone and come out, and that's where... I met you, met Justin, yeah. met Veronica, but Ed, I met literally everybody, and most of them have been on my show now. Yeah. Uh, but what I realized, it was a bunch of really talented photographers coming together mm-hmm. to help you do a photo shoot, and yeah. that was so cool. Yeah, and, that, and that's kind of honestly like what we do, right? That's like the, the group that you know, I kind of gravitate towards and kind of build as, as my photo family, right? Um, you know, we kind of put, like, that's the one thing I say I, I'm really good at is putting people together and putting the right people together to kind of create, like, this mini coalition, right? Um, you know, like, it, it kind of started off, like, last year kind of st- at Imaging, kind of started off this huge, like, movement to kind of get people together in that way where um you know valerie was i was meeting her downtown to to go have dinner right on broad street i think it was broad street right and um i was talking to i've never met kayla before and i was just talking to her because i was coordinating her wings for my talk and you know so you know she was like you know working with like designers and working with um the coordinators and you know she's like well what do you guys want and i was like well this is where i'm thinking about so you know, we hit it off and we had several conversations and then I was like, hey, what are you guys doing? And I was like, hey, Val, do you mind if I had some people? I was like, no, we're the merrier. So then um, that night we had Valerie and her team, Kayla and Rick and Anisha, and then myself and a couple of my friends from the um, our Paris trip, and then um, Marietta and Justin and Veronica came along and I think it was one or two other people that kind of were with them. And that kind of what spawned off, like, you know, what we did for WPBI. I was like, leading into it, I was like, how do we get more people to our booths, right? And, um, you know, how do we kind of build this network of small businesses to really make that impact? So I designed this passport for WPBI, and we had... Um, a handful of small businesses that you had to go and talk to go to the booth and talk to somebody at the booth before you can get a stamp and then uh, when you um, came back and dropped your drop your passport off then you were able to enroll into this um, this giveaway you know and we had Stella Stella lights we had baby dream backdrops we had UAF photo labs we had um, after shoot you know we had so trendy so it was like um and then kayla douglas as well so it's like all these all these things that like you know you know it goes back to impact right how do we get more people to kind of pay attention to the smaller companies right Right. because you know booths are not you know cheap here um 
you know, space is not cheap. And then and with people walking around, how do you get meaningful conversations? Because, like, you can walk by and say, most people are like, oh, what's this swag? Or what do you got? You know, unless there's really some draw to get them to talk to you. Yeah. You know, then it kind of gets lost in the sauce because there's a ton of album companies. There's a ton of lighting companies. You know, there's a good amount of backdrop companies. You know, so how do you get them to really care about what you have? Right? And it's just kind of, you know, leaning on some of the experiences I've had with other, um, you know, conferences, because between photography conferences and optometry conferences, you know, I traveled 12 weeks out of the year last year. You do. Travel a lot. Yeah. You're always on the plane. <laughs> yes. That's the impression you're giving to everybody now. Yeah. And it, it's funny because, like, you know, half of it's for photography, a quarter of it's for optometry, and the other quarter is for family vacation. So, you know, that's something that, you know, as both of us now um, have our own businesses, you know, and that's our family businesses, um, we make sure that we, we put so much effort into it, but we also make sure that we take a pause and take time for ourselves and take time for our family and just really, um, because we're such on the go, right? And um, my oldest daughter, like her, her boyfriend, they sit down and have family dinner every night. That's great. You know, that's something I think we haven't had the only time we do that is when we go out on vacation, you know, and we're going out to dinner and sitting down. But most of the time, like, we're running on very different schedules where, you know, I'll make food and, you know, we'll have food there. And then sometimes it's, like, the kid's way to decompress and also my wife's way to decompress is, like, sitting in front of a TV or sitting in front of their shows and just kind of watching the shows and just concentrating, not talking to them. You know, you kind of figure things out, like, on how your family, you know, works and stuff like that. So that's kind of like how we work and her boyfriend was just totally like foreign to him that's saying that's okay <laughs> you know <laughs> it works yeah and like for us you know it works and then and then when we do sit down for family dinner together um there's it's more special you know so we have we, you know we have those conversations and, and we're talking you know we talk quite a bit anyway so it's not like that is the designated time to say okay how's your story stuff like that so outside of photography I'm curious do you have any useless skills that you're proud of um or some weird hobby that not many people know that you have weird hobby so I will say I use my engineering degree more now that I have a studio than I ever did throughout my career as a as a consultant tell me more like I build things and I like like so growing up I always loved like shows like West Coast Choppers and Pimp My Ride and where they're just fabricating stuff right Right. and so I was like I want to do that so this is like you know I've, I've created like walls for my studio um, panels backdrops things of that sort I've like I reverse engineered a bunch of stuff like those um, those wooden slat walls that you kind of take apart and put together for um, trade shows I was like let me see if I could build this. So, built that. Um, just basically watching a YouTube video and just kind of slow motion rewind, just like, oh, well, that screw's there. Okay, if I can put those boards together, that might... So, like, it'd be interesting to kind of get the plans for it to see how close I am. Yeah. But it's functional and it works. So, it's like, you know, I love doing stuff like that. Um, you know, Stella Pro is, is one of my ambassadors. And, you know, uh, the light in itself for what I do and what I shoot is fantastic because there's zero recycle time but like it's not powerful enough for when I want to shoot sometimes so I doubled it up but I had to jerry rig something so I don't know where it stopped but we were talking uh, our, our the, my, the thing died yeah. so we're just gonna go we're just gonna ease right back in yeah we're just gonna ease right into it we don't, I don't know exactly where this is gonna be so I'm just gonna Get Kiati back into what you were talking about in regards to you were talking Stella Pro lights, yep. and it wasn't powerful enough. Yep, it was. So I jerry rigged it with a. Um, Is that? All right. All right. Stella Pro lights weren't powerful enough. Yes. So I I love shooting um, at sunrise, right? And it's usually right when the sun's over the horizon, so right. it's really powerful sun. So you have to. You have to, you know, blow out the sun, right, to a certain extent. And, um, you know, the great lights, the reflex S's are phenomenal because they are a hybrid constant and strobe and with zero recycle time. So for movement, 
dancers, flowing dresses, they're, they're great because then you don't have to just wait for one click, right? And I can do that at full power. But it would still not be powerful enough for what I want to do with the sun right behind her, blaring at her. Um, so I doubled up the heads. I was like, oh, you know, there's, there's a quarter inch screw in here. So let me uh, put in a quick release plate the head together and kind of worked it worked nice right and then um you know and and that's kind of a funny story on how i got involved with stellar pearls like i, I bought uh their lights and i and i bought them out for uh my good ox um modifiers and um the bones mount and you know i use really large modifiers like big umbrellas big soft boxes and it just wasn't holding the weight so I'd reach out to them. I was like, hey, how do we kind of fix this? It's not working, right? And then, um, you know, they actually got me on the call with their engineering team. And then we kind of worked through a couple of different solutions and kind of kept working through and just kind of doing that. And eventually, you know, I became an ambassador. That's awesome. So. That's awesome. I'm curious, another not necessarily photography question. If you can instantly become an expert at something, Kiati, what would that be? Hmm. Languages. Languages? Yeah. Tell me more. Why? Um, I've always wanted to be able just to speak. Anyway, just kind of going into any situation and say, okay, I can speak Spanish. I can speak French. I can speak Arabic. You know, and just really kind of speak the native tongue. Right. And I think there's... Um, you know, just a certain thing about just being able to speak that language or understanding that language or hearing that language. Um, you know, like I always think back to when, so the question always interests me because I always think back to like the Matrix, right? And then he gets plugged in and he loads up a, loads and he's like, I know Kung Fu. <laughs> right. It was, it's like, if, if you could do that, man, there's a whole library of things. Agreed. Right? Like, I'm tone deaf. I can't sing. To say one. So it's like, and, and that's usually my answer, right? So, so like, if you ever see any of the stuff that I kind of post on Facebook, it's, it's very eclectic in, as far as the things that I do, right? I'll just kind of come up with some random stuff and just do it, right? And they're like, oh. And then I'll get the, is there, you know, every now and then people are like, oh, is there anything you can't do? And my, my go-to answer is sing. I can't sing. So you're talking about karaoke night, though, and like, yeah, 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 that you won't find me there. No, no, I am tone deaf, like you would believe. <laughs> oh my God. Like I, I enjoy it, but it should only be heard in my car by myself. A one-person audience. Yes, right. yes. Nice. Like no one else needs to needs to. Yeah, I wouldn't even call it singing at that point. <laughs> so, yeah. Kiati, where can people find you? Um, I'm based out of Maryland. Alka City, Maryland. Uh, my handle is at Kiati Plukes, K-I-A-T-I-P-L-O-O-K-S for Instagram. Um, my other Instagram handle is Kiati Plukes dot dance um, for my non-boudoir. Um, and then my studio is um, based in Alka City. So that's where I'm at. You can find me along the, the um, conference circuit because yeah. I'm usually here. Um, because I enjoy it. Like I said earlier, it's like it's it's where I get to hang out with my family. You know, it's one of those things where if you go to your wife and you say, hey, I'm going to go on a vacation with my photography friends. I'm going to do it a couple of times a year. And she's going to be like, NFW. If I go, hey, I'm going to this conference. I'm making money. I'm getting paid. And I get to hang out. Then it's like a different story. Right. right? And she gets it because she goes to her optometry conferences, right? And she gets to catch up with her old, old friends, her classmates, things of that sort. It's That's the beauty of things like this where I think, um, you know, people kind of don't necessarily put that emphasis on conferences on the community aspect of it. Like, I, I go for the community part of it, you know? If I learn something, fantastic. If I make new connections, that's really what I want to do. If I, you know, we met at the last imaging and look at where we're at. I know. Right? Um, and that's the thing. And, and, and it's cultivating those connections throughout the year. So it's not just, hey, I just met you at imaging, and then it drops, right? And it's, I think that's really where you find it, it turns from an acquaintance to a meeting to a friendship and, uh, you know, and being able to collaborate and, and create together. Right. Right? 
and being able to cultivate those conversations throughout the year and check in, you know, and it's not always about a take, take, take or a give, give, give or an ask, right? It's always just the, hey, how are you doing? Right. What's going on? Let's catch up, you know? And I think those are the ones that are genuine. Those are the ones that, like, are hands down, like, all right, you know, like, when you asked if I wanted to do this, there was absolutely zero hesitation. Yeah, and we've been trying. It's yeah. like mid last year, but now we're here. Yeah, it's and I think, I think it's better that we're doing it face to face. I know, I know. You know. I like these a lot. Yeah. So, well, Kiati, thank you for joining me. No problem. Um, Thanks for having me. We'll have to do this again because yes. I have so many questions. Still, we didn't even touch on it. And we'll touch on it when I talk to you again. Okay. Your underwater stuff is awesome oh, yeah. with Altex, but we'll, 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 we'll touch that. Yeah, we'll yeah, I love there. that. You know, the Altex has been great. The Stellar Pro um, lights have been phenomenal to yeah. basically take underwater, right? How, how many, you know, and, and it's basically a conversion kit, you know, that you put on the CLX-10s, and being able to take those out of water is, underwater is a game changer. It is. You know, and then... Um, and then you pair that up with the so trendy accessory gowns and have that flow underwater and it's just like it's magical. It is. It is. But we'll get to, we'll, we'll talk about that probably later this year, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, Kiari, I really appreciate you oh, chatting with me. Yeah, and of course. Um, we'll just we'll see I'll see you around. Yeah, yeah. You're I'm not here. going. I'll probably see you tonight too. Yep. We'll get some food. <laughs> no bacon. Well maybe I'll oh, have some Jesus. bacon. No more bacon. Way too much bacon. Story that happened. But <laughs> all right. Thanks. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you.